Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the lecture. Today is 23rd of July, 2020, and it's my birthday. <laughs> and I am happy that I've lectured with you. The course is CIV 481, and uh, the name of course is uh, Reinforced Concrete Theory. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Muhammad, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Therefore, today we see uh, some consideration about cantilever, continuous beam, and also we switch to the uh, T-beams. The concept of T-beams, and we see two types of calculation of T-beam. Let's get started. You saw the cover page. This is the cover page that you saw that. Now, in the next slide, you see the topics of the lecture of today. We will review the conditions and some uh, technical specification for cantilever and continuous beams. For example, when you had simple support beam, it was clear at the middle span the reinforcement was at the bottom of the section, but cantilever is inverse because you see that we have negative moment at support, not positive moment. For continuous beam, we have positive moments at the middle spans and negative moments at supports. Therefore, the location of the reinforcement at the middle span is bottom, but at the support is at top. We will review them. And then we see the concepts and method of design that we use this ultimate strength design for designing T-beams. And we see some examples for calculation of T-beams. And then we see two methods for that. One method that is, I think is modern method. The other is the traditional method that uh, for example, years ago, everyone used that. And now some of people use that as well. And just know that some people. Therefore, cantilever beams and continuous beams. You see the sketch of one cantilever beam in the figure. As you see, when we have cantilever beam under the load, let me write something for you. When we have this beam under the load, you know, we have one deflection like this. And the deform, the shape of the beam should be like this under the load. What happened? You see the cracks. Cracks at supports, they are at top. Here we have crack. When we have crack, we should put reinforcement steel bars to cover that. Let me show you with another color, for example, blue. For reinforcing that, we use reinforcement here at top. This is the reinforcement. Why? Because at this zone, we have tension in the concrete and we have tension cracks and we cover the tension cracks by putting a steel bars. 
Therefore, don't forget steel bars in the cantilever at supports, they are at top. And here, doesn't need any more, some of them, because bottom never, the need doesn't any uh, reinforcement there. But you, you remember that for simply support beam, if we had, for this case, you saw that the, under the load that we have, we have deformation like this, deformed shape of a steel, uh, beam. And we have crack here. And for this crack, we use Reinforcement, therefore we put reinforcement here, bottom, for the mid span. But you see, for the cantilever at the support, negative moment, they are at top. In other words, if I sketch the <coughs> bending moment, Bending moment diagram for simple beam was like this. And we had maximum moment at the mid span. But in cantilever, if this is cantilever here, you know that the moment is like this here. I am showing for continuous uh, load. Therefore, here it is negative. But here it was positive. The crack was down. Yeah, down. But for negative, the crack is up. And we put the enforcement there. Now let's see the condition for continuous speed. If you have continuous spin, you will see that it shows inverse the moment, but doesn't uh, matter. For design, it's better we show positive moment down. Why? Because it's uh, parallel to the deformed shape of the beam. If you put moment positive down and negative top like this, and put here positive, is better than this one. Why? In some sense of material proof, they put like this. But for design, it's better you put positive down, negative above the axis that you have, if, if this is axis. It's better, why? Because positive moment is toward down, is like the deformation shape of the beam, is better. And you have one feeling. When the beam it has deformation uh, downward, it means that for you, moment should be positive. If upward, negative. And these curvatures, downward, upward, you can have a feeling about the cracks. When you see where is the location of crack, you can put the reinforcement there. It's clear. Let's now. Uh, I erase this part and so, okay. Okay, for positive moment, you see the reinforcement is put down. At mid spans here down, and also here down. I think I should change the color you see better. Yes. 
When horse smell at mid span is down, here is down, and here is down for these positive moments. For negative moments at supports, because negative, you have crack at top, you have crack here, you put reinforcement there. Here again, at support here, we have crack here. You know, we put reinforcement for negative moment top. Again, for here, the same. And put at top. For negative moment, we put at top. For positive moment, crack was at the middle span here. We put reinforcement in a set of the neglected concrete and cracked concrete. We put here and here. Therefore, at supports, which we have negative moment, we put reinforcement at top of the section. At the middle span, at middle span, we put at bottom of the section. Okay, we start chapter five. That first we see analysis and design of hiddens. And later, we see the design of doubly reinforced beams. First, T beams. What is T beam? What is the difference between T beam and rectangular section beam? Reinforced concrete floor systems, slabs, normally consist of slabs and beams that are placed monolithically. When they cast the concrete, they fabricate the beam and slab together in the same time. Therefore, they will get solid together, they work later together. As a result, the two parts, it means the beams, rectangular beams, and also the slabs, act together to resist the applied loads on them. In effect, the beams have extra widths and their tops called flanges. And the resulting T-shaped beam are called T-beam. The part of T-beam below the slab is referred as a web or a stem. The beam may be L-shaped if the stem is, is at the end of the slab. Imagine that you have one beam here, one slab here, another beam, Slab, beam, slab, beam, and end the slab. You imagine that we have such a ceiling. Okay, the, we, told, we uh, stated that the beam and the slab work together. For example, part of a slab from here works together with this beam. If they are casted separately, they don't work together, huh? 
They are casted in the same time. If you see, we have here a TV. Would you like a T? When the beam is at the corner, part of the slab work with that. And you see, from here we don't have anything. It doesn't continue. And this beam is not T beam, it's L beam. We call that L, L beam. Therefore, if the beam is at the ends, at the ends, they are L beam, this is L as well. At the middle, they are T beams. T beam, T beam, and so on. The slab part is called the flange. Is called flange. This part. But the under the slab, this part is called web or a stem. Therefore, a T-beam has flange, this part is flange. And under the flange, there is a web, this is a web. Now let's see how to design and how we consider the width of that and etc. Let me erase this one and then continue. Yes. The analysis of T beams is quite similar to analysis of rectangular beams. In that, the specification relating to the strains in the reinforcings are identical. To repeat briefly, it's desirable to have epsilon T. Epsilon T was strain at the steel level. Epsilon T, it was greater than 0 0.005. We saw that the section is ductile, the steel is yielded, and it was good for design, and phi was 0 0.09, you remember. In this condition, at bay may not be less than 0.004, unless the member is subjected to an axial load. We don't go to the, the, for example, beam columns. When we have beam columns, in addition to the bending, we have axial load as well. But if the strain may be to 0.04, unless the member is subjected to an axial load greater than 0, 01 f prime c a g it means about 10 percent the capacity of the section in comparison you will learn that epsilon t strain at steel values are almost always much larger than 0 0.005 in t beams because of their very large compression flanges the contribution of the flanges is too much. And because we have a large part that is in compression, the tension or tensile part, which is a steel, surely, or most of the cases, they are yielded. When we say yielded, the strain is more than two per thousand, 0 0.002. And most probably more than 5 per thousand, 0 
for such members, the value of C are normally very small. C was, you remember, and the calculated epsilon T value are very large. C was the location of the neutral axis to the distance from location of the axis to the top fiber of concrete. The neutral axis for T beams can fall either in flange or web. Therefore, when we design T beams, we should consider two different conditions and we should check them. First, we assume at, for example, web and check is it right or not. If not, we should start again to design by considering neutral axis at flange. That's a question of trial and error. Depending on the properties of slabs and stems, depends on the primacy, the sizes of the slab and web and the amount of steel. If it's, it falls in the flange and it more almost does, for positive moment, the rectangular beam formula apply. It's very important. If the neutral axis falls at flange, that always or almost it happens for positive moment, the design is very simple. The design of T-beam is exactly like the design of rectangular beam that we saw before. But in condition that neutral axis is at flange. The concrete below the neutral axis is assumed to be cracked. And we neglect the cracked concrete, you know that. And the shape has no effect on the flexural, flexural calculation. Other than weight, only the weight has mm, considered. The section above the neutral axis is rectangular. If the neutral axis is below the flange, second case is the neutral axis is below the flange. In that case, we should design like a beam, T-beam, it's not rectangular. Let's see this thing in the next slide. In this slide at top, you see that how a T-beam is performed, partially in the, uh, slab part and the others from the beam. And we should find an effective flange width B. No worries why we can find according to the three criteria given by ACI code. Easily we can find that. And BW is another BB here we have two. We have B or BF, and we have BW or V of uh, web. Okay, case one. If the location of neutral axis is located at flange, you see the uh, here, the shaded part is the only compression part. And the other reinforced uh, concrete are neglected. Therefore, I can say that we had more concrete. It was a rectangular section. And we neglected this uh, tension 
concrete. It means that if it is T beam, the tension in concrete is neglected. If it's rectangular beam, again it's uh, neglected. Therefore, the design are the same. Therefore, we can say we have a beam with the width of B. Don't forget B, not BW. We consider that we have a full rectangular section. Why? Because in the T beam or in uh, rectangular beam, just we consider concrete in the compression zone. The others are neglected. And we have reinforcement here. Here or distributed, doesn't matter, they are the same. The distance from neutral axis, the effect are the same against the flexural or bending moment. But there is another possibility that the location of neutral axis is under the flange, is at web. In that case, this part of rain, uh, concrete is neglected because of intention. The others, considering this part, are in, under the compression, and then we should consider all of them. And for this case, you see that the design is like T-beam. But the first case, we design like oh, one rectangular section. Just we had tension here, and compression here. And reinforcement here. They would these are equal. T beam or this is T, but this is rectangular section, they are the same. But don't forget the width of beam is B, not BW. Therefore, two different cases. First, if neutral axis is at flange, we have a design of rectangular beam. But case two, if location of neutral axis is under the flange, is at the web, we have we should design like a T beam. Both of these cases are for positive moment. Don't forget, for negative moment, we see later. Both of them are for M positive, positive moment. If the neutral axis is assumed to fall within the flange for the case one, in that case, we can calculate A from this formula, like rectangular one. Actually, when you, when you compare these three figures, if neutral axis is under flange is here, it doesn't matter which shape concrete has. It's like this, or like this, or simply like this. Because we neglect all of the concrete here or here or here. All of them are like TV. And if neutral axis it was at flange, we neglected the other parts. All of them was like rectangular beam, designed like rectangular beam. 
This part was in under compression. And we have a steel here. Now let's see the analysis of the TV. The calculation of the design strength of T-beams is illustrated in the example that we have, two examples. One of them, when we have neutral axis at flange, the other under flange. The first of the problems, the neutral axis falls in flange. The design is like rectangular beam. While for the second one, it's in the web. What design is like TV? Now we see here a step by step method for design of TV. The procedure used for both examples involve the following steps. Step one. In the first step, we check the minimum reinforcement area used in the section, AS minimum. And we check with the ACI code requirement. By using BW as the web width, at the second step, we compute the tension force at the section, which is AS times FY, because we use ultimate strength design. And the assumption is the steel is yielded, therefore we use FY. At the step three, we determine the area of the concrete in compression AC, the total area. Perhaps the section is not rectangular section. At that time, it's not, you cannot say A times B. We write AC in general. When we see AC, the section can have any form. The section may have such a form, I don't know. In this case, if neutral axis are here, is here, the total area is AC. Any form of section we can have, doesn't matter. This area is AC. And when we uh, use the equilibrium and equating C, compression force, and T, we write C equals T equals 0 0.85, not times A times B that we use for rectangular section. We write times AC, any section. And we find AC from here. At the fourth step, we calculate A, C, and epsilon T. A was the compression height of the part in the equivalent stress block applied by ACI. And C was the distance between the location of neutral axis up to the top fiber of the section, top fiber concrete. And epsilon T was a strain at steel. And finally, we calculate MU. MU was phi times MN. You remember that MN was nominal moment and phi was a strength reduction factor. Phi for bending was 0 0.9 or less, but not less than, than 0 0.65. Now let's see a little more about example and then we go to the example. For example, 5-1, where the neutral axis falls in the flange, it would be logical to apply the normal rectangular equation of section 3-4 that we saw that. 
but the authors of the book have used the couple method as a background for solution of example two, where the neutral axis falls in the web. The same procedure can be used for determining the design strengths of pensilely reinforced concrete beams of any shape. When you use AC, we can use any shape. Next slide, we see example 5.y. Uh, in this example, we should determine the design strengths of the T-beam shown in the figure. While a prime C is given equal is equal to 4,000 psi, and Fy is equal to 60,000 psi, the beam has a width is a span of 30 feet and is cast integrally with the flow slab. It means that we have T-beam. We don't have a slab and rectangular beam. That is four inch thickness. The thickness of a slab is given four inch. Therefore, this four inch is the height of flange for the TV. They are equal. The clear distance between webs in, if you consider two adjacent beams, this is 50 inches. Let me show what is the span, what is the tipping. Imagine that you have one roof plan. This is roof plan. If you have one beam here, T beam, one here, and one here, let me use another color. It's clear this is the length of beam from here to here. It's written the span, 30 feet the span. Therefore, L equals, L is a span length, 30 feet. You show feet like this, just one feet. But, the clear distance between webs is 50. Clear is inside to inside, for example, from here to here. You consider two adjacent beam, and this is 50 inches, not foot. 50 inches. If we consider to design this beam, for example, the length is clear, and the S or a spacing plus 15, 50 inches. Why we need them? We need to calculate B. B, the effective bit of the beam, B or BF, we should find from these three value and consider the minimum value of these values.
which one is mean? The first one should be less or equal to 16 times HF. 16 times the height of the flange plus BW. If you apply the value, you will find 74 inches. The second one is should be less or equal to the average clear distance between the webs that I called S, you remember, and I showed here. Actually, this distance between two beams. Plus BW, the width of the web. Therefore, you apply the values. And you find 60 inches. Third criteria, B should be less than a span or a span length divided by 4. The span length was 30 feet. 30 feet divided by 4 is 7.5 feet. Multiplied by 12 give us 90 inches. Now we should compare these three items. Number 1, 74. Number 2. 60 and number 3, 90 inches. Which one? The minimum is this one, 60. Therefore, we write B equals 60 inches. That is shown here. D, the distance between the centroid of the steel bars to the top extreme fiber. Look, we have two rows of steel. This distance should be at the centroid of them, at the middle of them. Not here, not here. Passing from the middle of them. Then we have D24. We have HF, the height of flange four inches, which is equals to the slab thickness, and B 60 inches, and we go to see the design. Let me see how many students we have at lecture. 39 students we have. I hope everyone is happy and hearing me. Do you hear me? Let me check who says yes, who is here or is not. Yes, Muhammad, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I am very happy that <laughs> you are Carefully listen to the lecture. Yes, yes. Salem, yes, Saeed, Yusuf, Muhammad, etc. Okay. Yeah. In next slide, first we check the minimum area for steel bars, AS minimum. You remember that we had AS equals rho min times VW times D. We apply the values, we have this one. But we had another condition. The AS we found what should not be less than this value as well. Okay. 
Here, this is lesser than this one. We don't consider this one, which is lesser than. We consider this one as a s min. Now we compare a s min with the a s that given to us. It was six square inches. Therefore, a s min is lesser than a s. That's okay. We check the minimum area or minimum reinforcement areas. The second step was calculating the value of tension force, T. T equals A S F Y. We have A S, we have F Y. It was given to P S I, we converted to K S I divided by thousand. And the result is in kips. Because here we have kips per square inches. At the third step, we calculate AC. AC is the total area of concrete under com compression. For equating, you remember T equals C. We find here AC. And applying the values that we have, we find AC 105.88 square inches. Now, there was one uh, assumption. What was the assumption? Actually, we didn't start with assumption where is the location of the neutral axis. If we find neutral axis at flange, if we calculate the area of flange, which is this part, and you see that area of flange equals B, which is 60 inches, times HF, it is 60 inches, time 4 inches. Therefore, this is 250, 40 square inches. Okay, if, if AC that we calculated the area under compression is greater than AF, it means the location is here, neutral axis. Why in addition to the area under flange, we have another part here? If it was less than 250, the neutral axis was located at flange. But now it is located at web. Okay, we compare AC and AF. AC is less than AF. It means that the compression block is in flange. Let me see. 
previous slide. Therefore, we don't have AC greater than AF. Therefore, need to access not here. Is less than AC is less than AF. This is 105. This is 240. Therefore, where is the location of neutral access? Neutral access is at flange. It's here. The compression zone is over the neutral access. Why? Because AC was less than AF. Now you remember that I say the we neglect the tensile concrete. Doesn't matter if the shape is like a rectangular or like T. Because we neglect this concrete. Either it can be T or rectangular, R are neglected, doesn't matter. The only important part for us is the compression part in concrete. Therefore, the design is like design of a rectangular beam like this. The neutral axis is here. We have compression just here. And don't forget this is V. And we have a steel bars here, for example. If the design is like a rectangular beam, it's easy. Okay, I am very glad that one hour passed. You have energy there. Let's continue without break and perhaps we can uh, finish earlier. Let's see. Because we have a son, uh, a school, and the semester is very short, and i afraid we cannot finish all the syllabuses in this uh, short semester. Therefore, I apologize you without break, I continue. It's good for you, for your future, I think. You will be proud in general, inshallah, when you know everything. Therefore, let's go and design like a rectangular beam. We saw this part, I am erasing this part. Therefore, when we compared AC And AF, we saw that AC is less than AF. We understood that location of neutral axis or the compression stress block is in flange. A is less than four inches. Therefore, the design is like rectangular design. Rectangular section. We calculate the height of stress block, the location, the distance between location of the axis and top extreme fiber of concrete, and also a strain at a steel. We had this formula for rectangular section. We apply that. No, before applying, you know. This is AC. Before that, if you divide by B, you will find A. What does it mean? It means that we had this section as rectangular section. 
he said that this is the compression zone. The area of this part, the shaded one, the area is AC. The height is A. It's clear the area of and the bit is B. You know, AC equals A times B. So from here, you see that A equals AC over B. as we had here. Therefore, by dividing AC to B, we find A. It's less than four inches, it's clear. The compression zone is in the flange, not in the web. Therefore, the design is exactly like rectangular B. You remember that we had C equals A over beta 1. Beta 1 is 0, 0.85. Why? Because a prime C is 4,000 PSI. And it can, could be even less than that for 0, 0.85. If it was greater than 4,000, beta 1 was not 0, 0.85. We should calculate from the graph or formula. You remember? And pay attention to the exam, please. Last exam final exam, I gave a prime C more than 4,000, and some student made mistake put a beta 1, 0, 85. No. And more than half of the student, they did the right, correct one, and found beta 1, which was less than 0, 85. And we calculate epsilon t. Epsilon T from the formula that we had from the similarity of triangles in the strain profile. We saw this one for rectangular, for every section, same we found. We apply the values B and C and A, C, and we find the values about 31 per thousand is much greater than 5 per thousand. It means that the section is ductile, the steel is yielded, much is very far from even the starting of the building, and therefore phi is 0, 0,9. Pay attention, if you make mistake in beta 1, the epsilon 1 may be changed, and then this value may be changed, and phi may be changed. Be careful in the exam. Careful for beta 1. Beta 1 is 0, 0.85 if a prime C is 4,000 PSI. If it's greater than 4,000 PSI, you should calculate. And finally, we calculate MU. MU ultimate design resisting moment was equals phi times mn. Phi was the strength reduction factor, we found 0, 0,9. And mn represents the nominal moment, nominal resisting moment. Okay, for calculating phi mn, you remember it equals phi times t, tension force times z. z was the level arm of the moment. 
they were arm z you saw that it was d minus a over minus d minus a over 2 which belongs to the rectangular section we apply the value of d a we find z value applying the formula of phi m n we find the ultimate resisting moment some value in in kips <coughs> we divide inch by 12 we find feet therefore we find 624.2 foot kips this is the final answer In this example, you notice that the location of neutral axis was at flange. But in next example, we see that the location of neutral axis is not at flange, it's at web. Therefore, design of that one is not like rectangular section, it's like tubing. Example 5.2. Compute the design strength for the T beam shown in the figure. Considering a prime C 4000 psi and FY 60,000 psi. You see in this example, the effective width is given is not given you should calculate according to three, three criteria given by ACI code is given here D is given from the centroid of steel bars not at the each steel bar and HF is given four inches. And you see AC, AC is the area of the flange is 30 times four is 120 square inches. This is AC. If this is AF, AF is 120 square inches. When we calculate AC, AC is all the compressions on here. If it's greater than 120, it means that neutral axis is at located at web. In this example, we have such a case. Now let's see the solution. As usual, first we check the minimum steel area. AS mean equals rho mean times BW times D. We apply the values and find 1.3. And again, it should not be less than this value. We calculate this value. This is less than this one. Therefore, we don't consider that one. We consider this one as the floor of the value, the minimum of minimum. Therefore, this is for us now AS mean. Comparing AS mean with the AS given, we see that AS is greater than AS mean. That's okay. The minimum value of a steel is checked. At the second step, we should calculate the tension force, tensile force at the steel. Because it's ultimate strength design, you know that the steel should be yielded, a file. So we say 
P equals a S times a phi. We apply the values, we find. Here we applied KSI, keeps per square inches. The result is in keeps, not in pounds. At the third step, we determine AC and its center of gravity. Therefore, maybe we can calculate, you remember that equating the compression force to tensile force give us AC. T equals AC equals T over 0.85 F prime C. By applying formula, we find something about 178 square inches. We calculated the area of flange AF. It was 120. The AC is greater than flange area. It means that the location of neutral axis is at depth, not at flange. The stress block must extend it below the flange to provide the necessary compression area. The difference, 178.6 minus 120. This is the compression area in the flange. If you divide by VW, you can find the height of compression zone in web. In web. I don't think the figure shows that. No? Let me see. Is there any figure for that? Yes, yeah. You saw this was A F. A C was one hundred seventy eight point six minus one hundred twenty. The remaining part is here. Dividing this area by 14, which is BW, we can find this height here. Which is area under compression at web divided by BW, we find 4.19. You see that the A, A is from here to here. Is the summation of 4.19 and 4 inches. So this is A. But we don't need A here, this one, because we have two shaded rectangular under compression. We should calculate Y bar for them. And you know Z equals not D minus A over two, it is D minus Y bar. Therefore we calculate Y bar for two rectangular, one at top and one bottom and so on. Let's get back to the solution. Okay, up to here we understood that the, the location of neutral axis is at web. Therefore, we cannot use the relations that we had for rectangular section. We should calculate Y bar. How? I go to the next slide. Here. We have two area. I call this one A1.
and this one as A2. You know, summation of A1 and 2 is AC. Okay, A1 has one centroid at the middle, which descends to top. I call that Y1. And Y1 is clear, is 4 over 2. Y1 is equals 2 inches. Center of gravity of the second one is at the middle of the bottom triangle. This is Y2. Y2 equals this 4 plus half of this value. So for Y2, It's four inches plus four point nineteen inches over two. Everything is clear, therefore we can calculate by bar. What is by bar? You know that y bar equals summation of a i times y i over summation of a i. Therefore, y bar equals a one, which is one hundred twenty inch square inches times y one, which is Two inches plus A2 which is 58.6 square inches times Y2 that we calculated here this is Y2 Divided by A1, which is 120, plus A2, which is 558.6. And totally, this was, you remember, this is AC. The summation. Well, from here we calculate y bar. y bar if there is center of gravity for, of both the angles here y bar is from here to top. This is y bar. Therefore we have calculated y bar as well. Let me erase this part and go back to the uh, example. Therefore, Y bar, as I told you, A1, Y1, plus A2, Y2, over A1 plus A2, or AC. We find the value of Y bar, 3.34 inch inches. 
The lever arm distance from T to Z is shown by Z. It is D minus Z. Z uh, uh, D minus uh, Y bar. Therefore, this is Z. Z equals this value. What is this? This is D. What is this? This is Y bar. And we find 26.66 inches. And A, as I mentioned, it was the summation of HF plus the height of compression zone in web. It is 8.919 inches. From here, we calculate C. Luckily, beta 1 was 4,000 PSI. Directly, we have beta 1, 0, 85. If it was greater than 4,000, we should calculate beta 1, which was less than 0, 85. And we find the value of C. We apply in the epsilon T. And we find epsilon T, which is a stress at the steel level. And it's something about six per thousand, which is greater than five per thousand. Therefore, it means this section is ductile. And phi equals zero nine. Now we have phi, T, Z, we can calculate MU. Ultimate strength design, which equals phi times mn. Phi strength is action factor. We calculate it by 0, 0,9. And we calculated t and z. Apply the value, we will find the value in inch kips. We divide inch by 12, we find the result in foot kips. And this is the end of calculation of a T beam. We saw two examples, two T beam examples. The first one, the apparent it was uh, like a T beam, but the behavior was like rectangular beam because the neutral axis, it was at flange. We neglected the tensile concrete and design was exactly like rectangular beam. We did that. The second one, the location of neutral axis was at flange, at web. Therefore, it's a real T-beam and the behavior is like T-beam as well. Therefore, what was the difference? The difference is that Z is different. You should find the center of gravity of two parts of the flange and web under compression and they apply in the MU, ultimate resisting moment or ultimate strength moment. We did that. Now, uh, before going to next, Part. Let me see what time is it. It's 626. We have a little more to continue the lecture. You saw the design of the T beam as the design of the method that we considered AC and compared with the AF, it was a very good method that we can apply for any type of section, not only T, any type. But there is a traditional method that the, uh, some engineers knows only this, the second method. They didn't know that method that we saw. Or they prefer, I don't know, or they used to use this one. 
Let's see what is this method. That a lot of books talk about this method. The preceding section presented a very important method of anal analyze, analyzing, analyzing reinforced concrete beams. It's a general method that is applied to tensilely reinforced beams of any cross section, any type. Trapezoid, I don't know, rectangular, T-beam, L-beam, any type. T-beams are so very common. However, that may designer prefer another method that is specifically designed for T-beam. I told you, I know that as a traditional method for calculating T-beam. If I didn't teach you, if I was a junior and stopped there, never I saw this method. Because in 40 years ago, there was not such a method. Just we started with this method that we see here. And a lot of books, if you search, they are directly this method. But that method was more interesting, amazing. You can apply for any type of section, but the second one is only for TVs. First, the value of A is determined as previously described in the, this chapter. Should it be less than the flange thickness, if A is less than HF, we will have a rectangular beam. As we discussed, you saw that. And the rectangular beam formulas will apply. In the first example, it was rectangular beam. If it's A is greater than the flange thickness, HF, as was the case for the example two that we saw, the special method to be described here will be very useful. Therefore, for second method, we should apply this method that we have here. The beam, I will show in next slide to you, we divide the beam into a set of rectangular parts consisting of the overhanging parts of the flange and the compression part of the web. Therefore, in this traditional method, as you see in the monitor monitor, we divide the T-beam, is shown at figure A, by two parts equals part B just is just flange at the middle and the web under compression and plus the figure part C that you see just two wings of the Flanges and total these two part give us equivalency to the T beam that we have. Okay, what we can do? Look, this part at figure B. What is this? This is exactly one rectangular section. But the rectangular section with the width of BW, not B. You remember that you calculated C at the center of the compression zone. You calculated T. the tension at the steel, you applied the stress block of ACI, you calculated C equals 0.85 at prime CAB, you calculated T equals AS times FY, Z was D minus A over two, and A, and everything was clear. This was design of 
rectangular section that we saw before. But for the second part, also you have one compression zone, you can say C, if this is C, for example, W or C1, this can be CF or C2. And you know that A from the center up to top is H over two. This is A for that. Is half of HF. And again, if there is T here, you can say T2 or TF. And this was T1 or TW. But when you divide this one, you divide the total AS in two parts. You say AS equals AS1 or SW plus AS2 or ASF. Don't forget this one. AS equals AS one or SW plus AS. F or AS2. And we write the equations. The total compression CW in the web rectangle and the total compression force in the hanging flange or in the the wings of the flange, CF are composed as follows. CW equals 0.85 prime C times A BW. CF equals, it has two parts. You can write, they have two wings, but this is the width of the total of them. How, let me show you. Look, here is B over two minus B W over two. Here also is E over two minus VW. The summation of these two part which give us the summation of the compression concrete here and here. You see B over two plus B over two is B minus BW over two minus V over W2 is BW. If we can consider in instead of two parts, you can consider one part with the width of B minus BW and the height of HF. That's all. Therefore, when you calculate, when you write CF, CF, we consider this area of two of them. And give us B minus BW times HF, this is the area of the compression zone, times 0.85 F prime C, which is intensity of stress at the equivalent uh, block stress block of ACI, we saw this right CF. 
And now, then the nominal moment Mn for the T section is determined by multiplying CW and CF by their respective level arms from the center to the center of the steel. For example, this is CW, this is ZW. This is CF, this is ZF. This was rectangular D minus A over two, they were fixed rectangular D minus H over F over two. And we find the formula. Okay, let me see, I think. For traditional method, we saw the formula. For application of the formula in some examples, I think I didn't give you a break, I make you tired. Sorry for that, apologize for that. But we had the full lecture. We can stop here and we can see the examples next lecture by reviewing shortly the concept and the formulation of the design and these examples. If you agree, I stop here because we had enough for today lecture. And if you start, takes more time and pass your time. Let's see what you say. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Professor. Therefore, I stop that, huh? and I agree that. Ayub, thank you, Professor. Why you a good, thank you very much. Thank you for your kindness. Everyone say thank you, Professor. Therefore, it means that you are happy that I stop here. Okay, thank you very much. If you have any question, ask me. If not, please prepare yourself. You know that next week we have one lecture, one exam. Next Tuesday we have lecture, and next Thursday we have exam. You are welcome. Okay, please uh, write your name, surname here, and in use them as well, and go please Fill the feedback questionnaire. That's a good record for your attendance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Therefore, I stop the recording in Google Meet. And if you don't have any question, I wish you good luck.